Clap your hands, all ye people, shout unto God with a voice of triumph. Clap your hands, all ye people, shout unto God with a voice of praise. Hosanna, Hosanna, shout unto God with a voice of triumph. Praise him, praise him, shout unto God with a voice of praise. <clears throat> I, I thought I'd start <clears throat> a little different today. This is Barbara Jean. Um, I sang that song for a reason. <clears throat> anyway. Not to show off my singing talents, I'm sure. <clears throat> but I, I wanted to um, share something that the Lord uh, gave me today. Actually, it had me giggling all day. I was uh, quite amused. The Lord has a, a tremendous sense of humor. And uh, he gave me a couple of uh, things that, that, like I said, just had me giggling uh, all day. A couple of visions. I... I, I uh, wanted to start out, first of all, <clears throat> uh, asking you to, first of all, imagine um, someone you really, really want to meet, okay? Um, a rock star, singing star, um, someone who has, you know, you listen to or you get a great deal of enjoyment from, and, and, and just imagine being in a situation, well, say you were a teenager again if you're not a teenager anymore and you're um, <clears throat> at a rock concert you know you know whatever okay you're at some kind of music concert that you're gonna really enjoy okay so um, and how would you act or how do teenagers act or even uh, older people act when they see someone they really really admire and uh, would like to get close to and uh, <clears throat> So you, you're at this concert. There's barriers up. The you know the, the police and the bodyguards have put barriers up. So there's only so far you can go. But uh, when the the concert starts and the rock singer comes out, uh, the musician comes out, and everyone's screaming their heads and they're waving their hands, and they want to get to as close as they can to that person as they can. They rush the front. And they're waving their hands and they're screaming their heads off, hooray, hooray, hooray! It's pretty exciting to be in that situation. I, I have a couple of times and, it's, you know, you just want to be up there and you want to, you know, just enjoy the moment and, and just be as close to that energy as you can be. Um, anyway, it's a pretty exciting experience. Um, now I want to put you, put, have you think about another thing. Okay, you've got that. So you've got the barriers keeping you from your rock star because, you know, you have to keep a certain distance and, you know, you don't want to disrupt the, the performance. Okay, so now here's another vision I want you to think about. Uh, you have children and uh, you're, they're experiencing Christmas really for the first time that, you know, they're at an age where they can understand Christmas. So you uh, get them all excited and Oh, you're going to take them to see Santa Claus. Now, I'm not a big advocate of Santa Claus. I, I'd rather people didn't celebrate Santa Claus. Uh, I, I like Christmas. I, I mean, I like the celebration of Jesus' birth. That always, I find that a very exciting time of year. But you may not. That's okay. Um, but just this uses as an illustration. Okay, so you have children and you're taking them to see Santa for the first time. And you've got them all built up. And you're telling them, oh, Santa's going to do this, and, and you can say this to Santa Claus, and, and uh, you know, you're going to sit on his lap. And, and so the children are all excited because, ooh, they get to see Santa. Woo so you take them to see Santa, and uh, the, the closer they get, the more excited they are. And then you put them on Santa's knee, and what do they do? They cry. They're so upset. They can't stand it. They're so, uh, get me away from this person. He's a stranger. They're having a fit, okay? Just a fit. And they want to get, get away. And you're so disappointed because you really wanted a good picture. <laughs> okay, so you got these two images in your mind? Okay. Now, um, I want, first of all, to read a couple of verses uh, from the New Testament. Romans 8.14 for as long as, uh, for excuse me, for as many are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. 
Romans 8, 15. Uh, actually, I'm going to read from Romans 8, 14 to Romans 17. For as many are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For you, are, uh, for you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God, and if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ. If so be that we suffer with him, that we might be glorified together. For God hath not... Oh, and this is Rome, 2 Timothy Second Timothy 1, seven. For God hath not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind. Okay, in Galatians 4, 3 to 7, it says, Even so we... When we were child, uh, when we were children, we were in bondage under the elements of the world. But when the fullness of time has come, God sent forth His Son, made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoptions, adoption of sons. And because you are sons, God has sent forth the Spirit of His Son into your hearts, crying, "Abba, Father." Wherefore thou art no more serv a servant, but a son, and if a son, then the heir of God through Christ. Hebrew four, Hebrews four, fourteen through sixteen, seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into heaven, Jesus the Son of God, let us hold fast our profess our profession. Uh, for we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with uh, the feelings of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we were, we are yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly into the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to, to help in time of need. I'm sorry I stumble, I have poor eyesight. But, okay, anyway. All right, now. This <laughs> this had me giggling all day. Uh, I read that first, those verses first. Uh, uh, okay, now I want to take you to Exodus. Uh, this is uh, pre Ten Commandments. This is before. This is after the Lord has delivered the the, the people of Israel, or excuse me, the, the Hebrews, because they're not Israelites yet, um, from Pharaoh. Okay, they've crossed the Red Sea. They've had all these miracles and workings of the Lord oh my goodness they've had so many wonderful things happen to them and, and witness witnesses and signs that the Lord loves them oh my goodness he loves them and uh, anyway the Lord has brought them to the holy mountain okay they're there and uh, God speaks to Moses and he says to Moses um, okay uh, I'm going to give you the Ten Commandments I want you to go tell the people clean themselves up uh, you know Engage in any sexual sexual activity. Stay pure. Think holy. <laughs> and I want you to put a barrier around the mountain. Okay, put up your bar barriers. Put your bodyguards around the mountain, uh, because you know I know that the, the people could get a little excited here. They could rush the mountain. You know, trying to get close to me. Put up the barriers. We don't want anybody to get hurt. We don't want anybody to die because if they touch the mountain, they're going to die. So put up those barriers just in case, okay? I, you know, I don't want anybody to die here today. So Moses goes down and tells the people, you know, we're putting up the barriers. Don't put your feet on the mountain because you could get hurt. And, uh, and keep clean, okay? So tomorrow or whatever, the third day, three days later, we are going to go to the mountain and God is going to speak to us. Woohoo! It's exciting, okay? So someone who's actually who done all these wonderful things for you and he's coming to uh, you're going to meet him face to face practically. Isn't that exciting? It should be really exciting. So um on the mo uh this is Exodus 19 verse 16. On the morning of the third day there were thunders and lightnings and thick clouds on the, upon the mountain and every loud trumpet blast and ver a very loud trumpet blast. So all the people who were in the camp trembled. Then Moses brought the people out of the camp to meet God. And they took their stand at the foot of the mountain. And Mount Sinai was wrapped in smoke because the Lord descended upon it in fire. And the smoke of it went up like the smoke of uh, a kiln. And the whole mountain shook greatly. 
Okay, and so Moses goes up to the mountain and he gets, he talks to the Lord again, okay? And now the Lord said to Moses, this is verse 21, and the Lord said to Moses, go down and warn the people, warn them, lest they break through to the Lord to gaze and many of them perish. And also the priests who come near to the Lord consecrate themselves, lest they break out upon them, you know, you know, take that chance and try to meet me. And Moses said, uh, said to the Lord, The people cannot come up to Mount Sinai, for thou thyself did charge us, saying, Set bounds around the mountain and consecrate it. And the Lord said to them, Go down and come up and bring Aaron with you, but do not let the priests and the people break through. Don't let them come in to come up to the Lord, lest he break out against them. Unless, you know, you just make, you don't want anybody to die here, people. Just uh, put that barrier around. Make sure you got your you know, your guards and whatever to keep people from rushing the gates. Okay, so basically that's what he's saying. And so Moses went down to the people and told them. Okay, <laughs> so Moses goes down and he starts to give them the Ten Commandments. Or it says, um, he, you know, the Lord. You no, know, Moses goes down and tells the people. Now be careful here. Don't anybody rush. Don't run to the mountain. I know in your excitement, you might be a little excited here to meet God. So um, in verse, uh, chapter 20, and God spoke. So here's God speaking. He's actually the one who gave the Ten Commandments. Not Moses. It was uh, God who spoke the Ten Commandments. And uh, he spoke all these words. So he gives them the Ten Commandments. Um, after he speaks... <laughs> Verse 18, it says, Now when all the people perceived the thunderings and the lightnings and the sound of the trumpets and the mountains smoking, the people were afraid and trembled, and they stood afar off. And said to Moses, You speak to us, you speak to us, and we will hear, but let not God speak to us, lest we die. <laughs> and the and verse 21, and the people stood afar off, while Moses drew near to the thick darkness where God was. It had me giggling because I thought, and Lord, after the Lord gave me that vision of being a rock star, and here's you know, God wanting so much for His people to uh, be excited about meeting Him, and He was going to have a relationship with them and show them how much He loved them and all this, and the people instead of rushing the gates went the opposite way. <laughs> they were trembling in fear, crying like babies peeing their pants, having a fit. <laughs> it had me giggling because um, the Lord really wanted a relationship with these people. Later on, uh, God says he hated this group of people because they never overcame their fear. They never overcame uh, their slave mentality. They never wanted a relationship with God. God wants a relationship with us people. He wants us to act with boldness. When we are uh, set free from our slavery and our bondage through Jesus Christ, He wants us run into the mountain and, and praising Him like He's a rock star. He wants us to rejoice. Uh, he wants us rushing the barriers, if you will. He wants us running to the throne room. He wants us to uh, rejoice in all that he's done for us, not to be hanging back out of fear of judgment because we're still in our slave mentality. Uh, it's time to let go of your slavery. Love is superior to law. Uh, read the book of Galatians. It will explain it all. The law is the old covenant. Love is the new. Love is superior to law. And that, that is explained in Galatians. Let's no longer be slaves in fear and trembling of judgment. Let us be like heirs of God through Jesus Christ that allows us freedom to the throne of God to speak with him boldly and have a relationship with him that God longs from us. He longs for a relationship with us people.
He wants us to come to him and treat him like a rock star. Yell and scream and praise his name and be so excited. Not so fearful. Anyway, I hope you got something from this. Enjoy and God bless.